welcome to the grand opening of the Rackspace San Francisco office. Thank you so much to all the Rackers who made this day happen. And we have a live audience here and people watching around the world and we're going to have a really interesting next couple of hours before we start uh, partying with food spotting later. What's going to happen uh, for the next couple hours, we're going to have several companies to help us celebrate our new theme, which is small teams making a big impact in the world. And we have several companies who are going to come out uh, from GoPro, uh, where uh, eight people created a video that is be has already been watched by four million people and it's changing marketing, to New Relic, which is uh, changing how small companies can monitor their servers and stuff like that, uh, to Logly, which is a new way to look at your log files and watch what your customers are learning. Earlier today, we had Eric Reese here, and he talked about a scientific method of how to build a startup. And one, one of the key tenets of his scientific method called Lean Startups is that you have to understand what your customers want. And that's why Logly is so important, right? Because you get to watch what your customers are actually doing on your new iPhone app or Android app or, or your website. So we're also going to have a lot of Rackspace executives and founders and VIPs through the uh, next two hours to talk about various things, including uh, these two gentlemen, uh, Lou Mormon and John Engates. John, uh, you're the CTO. Give me a 30-second pitch of wh what you do at Rackspace. So uh, I, I, um, nowadays I spend a lot of time talking to customers and, and uh, folks about cloud computing. I think Rackspace over the last few years has become a real leader in cloud computing and I think uh, a lot of people need to hear about it and, and uh, they need to learn about it. They need to spend time figuring out what to do with the cloud. And that's really what I spend a lot of my time doing. I travel a lot. They joke with me that CTO really stands for Chief Travel Officer because I travel so much. But uh, really just getting out there and, and evangelizing the idea of cloud computing. And Lou, what, what do you do at uh, Rackspace? Uh, so I run strategy for the company and uh, I'm obsessed with our future. And how do we uh, remain competitive uh, for the next uh, few years, for two next decades? And um, really was part of the team that really got the cloud effort going which in our mind is a reinvention of the hosting business and really hosting 2.0. And we really got a small team, which we can talk about, to create a new division, a new group that has really now become a huge part of our business. One, one thing I like about Rackspace is you're, you're a founder. You started when there was, what, five people working, well, right? Well, I'm not a technically a founder. So okay. I, you know, I joined uh, in April 2000, and there were about 30 people in the company. 30. Then, so. Okay. We were about a $2 million business. That Graham time, was so. misleading me. He said you were found. <laughs> <laughs> He's been nice enough to give me that, that uh, designation unofficially. So. Okay. <laughs> what, what was it like to, uh, to build a small team, 30 people, who built this worldwide company now? And, you know, what, give me some stories that you remember along the way that entrepreneurs can relate to, you know, the struggles of building a company that, that now is a, an important, interesting company. But. Well, I'm sure back when it was 30, it was not, you know, it wasn't clear that this was going to be the path. That's right. Well, you know, when we started, there were hundreds of hosting companies. And so we, we talk about being at the right place at the right time, but there really truly were hundreds of companies that were pursuing uh, the, the web revolution and the, the need for every company to have a presence on the web and how are we going to help those companies do it. And, you know, I would say, I mean, there's so many lessons we've learned and we, we can talk about a lot of them, but there's no question that if you're a company, you're going to be competing aggressively. And um, differentiation really matters. Uh, how are you going to mean something different to your customers and do something that's compelling and valuable to them that actually matters? And very early on, uh, we found out that uh, the technology was a component of it, but really helping customers to use that technology made an incredible difference. And uh, I remember Graham and I, we went to, uh, I'd been at the company probably six months, and we went up to talk to Gartner and said, hey, you know, we really think support is going to be the key to this business. And um, they just they just couldn't have imagined that that would have been uh, a successful strategy because at that time the technology was changing so rapidly. But when we talked to our customers, what they loved about us is that we could help them. And from that day on, we really started to orient the company towards fanatical support. And, um, you know, from sort of that decision and orienting the entire company around it, um, I think we prevailed out of those hundreds of companies. And, um, you know, I think every startup needs to think about how do they get a true difference that is compelling, sustainable, and meaningful to the customer. Now, it, it means a lot. We, at 
with uh, Eric Reese, we talked about the net promoter score, yeah. which uh, we ask our customers, well, how likely are you to tell somebody else about the company? Yep. And that gives us a score, which we w watch. And if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, we, we work our ass off to fix it, right? That's exactly right. How so tell me about some of the ways that over the years that you've improved customer service. Because a lot of companies, a lot of entrepreneurs are, are looking to become a service leader in, in their industry or in their, in their respective yeah, niche. well, I mean, it's something we, we talk about all the time. And, um, you know, it goes everything from the way we structure teams, the way we, um, the, the way we develop processes, the systems we've built behind it, the way we compensate people and incent people. Um, and all these things we've tweaked and adjusted. And as we've, if we, as we've added multiple products, we've had to sort of adjust it even more. Um, I think one of the, the most powerful ways we've done it is, is the way we've oriented teams to take care of customers and have ownership of customers. So if you come, uh, if you join the company as a customer, you're going to be assigned to a team, and that team owns that business, and they take care of you. And um, inside our company, they're competitive with each other about who has the highest net promoter score and who's got the lowest uh, churn and who's got the highest upgrades. And it creates a real sense of small teams that can really own a business and um, perform and improve things all the time. And from that, you end up with a lot of experimentation. And so each team will experiment with things and figure out things that work. And when they really work, we sort of spread them out to, to the other teams. So lots of things that w we've learned over the years. And it's really been rackers in the front yeah. lines figuring it out. I was going to mention rackers. That hiring the right people in the first place is a big, uh, a big distinction in terms of how you, how you build a great organization. Those teams that you were talking about, they want to make sure that they bring on people onto that team that are a good fit, to have a good cultural fit with the idea of fanatical support, want to come to work every day fired up about delivering great customer service. It's hard, it's hard to fake that. It's hard to be a, a nice person on the other end of the phone if you're gen, you know, sort of uh, genuinely not that uh, oriented that way. You know, it's hard to fake that. And customers can see through it if you, if you are faking it. And so um, I think you know, we've perpetuated the idea of fanatical support, built it into the DNA of the company, made sure that we hired people that were aligned with that concept, and just done that over and over and over again for 10 plus years. Yeah. So a, a lot of entrepreneurs around the world ask me, can I create a company without moving to San Francisco? And you guys did it. <laughs> so yeah. uh, what it, what's it been like? Because everybody in Silicon Valley and ar around the world said it's harder to do it outside of the San Francisco Bay Area, right? You know, I, in some ways, I think um, it might be hard to create ideas and get engineering going uh, outside of San Antonio. But I think it's probably Silicon easier Valley. to build a company uh, in Silicon Valley. I think it might be easier to build a company outside of Silicon Valley. Because Silicon Valley, to me, is an incredible place, the center of innovation. But uh, there's many entrepreneurs who are focused on ideas and, um, and how those ideas might fit with bigger companies. And there's a lot of selling in an early stage and those kinds of things. Whereas in San Antonio, Texas, you know, we got to make a living. And uh, so we built, uh, we built a company and we sort of were obsessed about building something for the long term, you know, very, very early on. And, you know, there's, we just didn't get caught up in, it's exciting around here. It's easy to get distracted in Silicon Valley. Right. It is so exciting. And there's so much innovation, so many bright people. And, um, you know, we sort of, we got a great idea and we got a lot of customers and we started building a company and we just were really focused. And so I think San Antonio in many ways is an incredible asset. And we've been embraced by the city and, and um, we've made it, we've made it a great home. It's so. interesting because a, a lot of startups do it the uh, other way around. They bring their CEO and maybe uh, their business development guy to San Francisco and leave their engineers somewhere else because they can't find engineers in San Francisco right now. Yeah. Um, what, why are you building this office here? <laughs> what, what, ex explain what this office is doing. Well, we're, we're so excited to be here. And we, we've had uh, a number of employees here, yourself included, who uh, you have know, been working out of every Starbucks all over town. And uh, we're out here all the time because we have such a, you know, such a huge customer base here. Um, obviously, we've also we made a couple of acquisitions on our own, uh, our, in our own right. Uh, the CloudKick team, uh, which is based here in San Francisco. What did they do, by the way? So CloudKick... Um, built a set of monitoring monitoring systems management tools uh, that we are in the process of integrating into our, our cloud offering, which we're really excited about. We're going to um, demonstrate that on a beer keg outside. <laughs> I, we are using some of the, the monitoring tools on the kegs, yeah. So, um, and then we bought, um, we bought uh, Anso Labs, which uh, the Anso team was part of the original group that built uh, the compute side of, of the OpenStack project. And um, they've s this, these two groups of engineering teams have really built the, the foundation of this office. And they've started to expand their teams. And they're working on really critical projects for our company. 
and there's so much talent here um, to tap into. So yeah. we're excited to be here. Yeah. What, as CTO, what, what are you seeing happen in the world, and what does this space or this yeah. neighborhood mean to you? Well, I think uh, obviously Rackspace um, and the, the world is excited about cloud computing. I mean, we've really embraced that concept. We've gone you know, full bore into uh, building out services and, and creating new capabilities that, that sort of resonate with people that want cloud computing. And these guys are building it. I mean, CloudKick was a, a cloud management tool um, you know, running on top of the cloud. They were software as a service. They were very much uh, in the know as to how, how to build clouds, how to manage them. Um, and obviously, the, the guys at uh, Anso were they were building the cloud for NASA. And so that you know, I think what we're seeing though is is the world wants this. This is this is a uh, a technology that is changing the face of how computing is going to get done. It's a it's a very big shift in computing. We we saw you know many many years ago the shift from mainframes to to um, uh, you know PCs or or uh, uh, client server architecture. We're seeing another shift going on now between client server and the cloud computing era. And that shift is even bigger because it's not just IT departments, it's consumers as well. It's, it's your mobile phone, it's your iPhone, it's your Android. That is where I think uh, uh, computing is going. Uh, enterprises are embracing it. They're a little behind the consumer companies, but they want it just as bad. And they're going to have to use these kind of technologies to get there. They can't sort of use the old way of, of building software and infrastructure. They've got to embrace the way that people like Facebook and uh, Google and uh, Twitter and Rackspace are, are building it. Yeah. We're going to talk with Graham, a Graham Weston, our uh, chairman, a little later. But one of the things that really caught my eye when we interviewed him, he, he didn't interview us for the job. We interviewed you for the job. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, s he took us around this old Mervins that was boarded up and was being torn apart. And he said, I'm going to build my uh, headquarters here. Our headquarters is going to be here. But it, and he said, I'm g I want you to come back every couple of years and look at w what impact we had on the neighborhood and the neighborhood had on us. Yeah. What does that mean for San Francisco, the San Francisco office? What, what's going to be the interface between Rackspace and the, and the neighborhood here? Because it's a pretty interesting neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, you know, I think that it, there's no question the mall situation we have in San Antonio is one of the most unusual uh, headquarters I think you're ever going to find. Uh, so for those that don't know, we, we took a 1970s massive, you know, Fast Times at Ridgemont High uh, mall and transformed it into our headquarters. And in your case, it was literally Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Me too, right? You, you, you both uh, we took your girlfriends there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's, and, and it's a neighborhood that uh, John actually grew up in that neighborhood. Yeah. And it's a neighborhood that had sort of fallen on hard times and, and we're really helped to turn it around. We really do want to make an impact on the community. And um, I'll tell you the, uh, I don't know if Alex is going to come and talk to you guys, but I know that the CloudKit guys have just been incredible stewards. And they are helping to foster the startup world. Uh, they're the Y Combinator uh, grads, and they are mentoring lots of folks. And um, I, I, I don't know what all they have planned, but I'm sure they're going to make an impact in many positive ways around yeah. the community. We want to help. So if, if folks have ideas around this community, we'd love to, to hear about how we can help. Absolutely. And, and one of those ideas is to kick off the San Francisco Speaker Series. The first speaker this afternoon was Eric Reese, but now we're going to have GoPro come up on stage. And Terrific. We're going to ha have a continuing series where we're going to invite the community into this room and, and have discussions about our industry, and not just from a Rackspace stand a standpoint, but from an industry uh, point of view. So that'll be interesting. That's great. What Over else, uh, in two minutes, anything else that you'd like to say to everybody, uh, all the Rackers here in the room? And uh, Well, Rackers all over the world. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're approaching 4,000 Rackers uh, all over the world. And, um, you know, I think it's just such an exciting time in our industry. And the, the, there's no question that what is happening in cloud computing is transforming everything. It's transforming the startup scene. It's transforming science. Um, it's, it's trans it's, I think it's going to transform energy. It's going to transform everything. The ability to tap into computing instantly and at an extremely low cost and do incredibly powerful things is um, an amazing uh, revolution that we're all just lucky to be a part of. And we hope to to help move it along, and uh, these rackers that are here and all over the world are, are making it happen. So uh, we're, we're excited to be here and uh, extend our presence and, and continue the revolution. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming up Thanks and helping us kick off this big party. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Great. <laughs>